So many of us are making the big transition to remote learning, and we're trying to make sense of it. Many of us have been doing it for several weeks. And what's nice is that there are some people out there in the education community that have been doing this kind of learning for a long time. And what's nice also is that so many of these people are very generous with their experience and they're willing to share with us what has worked for them and face-to-face -face teacher who made this transition as well. So I want to welcome you into this video. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Matt Miller. I'm the author of Ditch That Textbook. And um, if you're joining us live, then we would love for you to check in in the chat. Um, definitely do uh, drop your name and your location and what you do in education. We want to say hello to you as well. Um, but I also want to kick it over to our guest and give him an opportunity to kind of um, introduce himself. So, uh, Paulino, thank you again so much for joining us. Can you tell everybody just a little bit about uh, who you are and what you do? Well, once upon a time, many decades ago, a man met a woman and they fell in love. And they just, no, I won't go to my whole life history. <laughs> <laughs> but my name is Paulino Brunner. I'm originally from Argentina and I live now in the beautiful city of Minneapolis, Minnesota, where I've been here for about 20 years and um, always teaching Spanish and about 10 years, uh, more or less, uh, online. I would have to say that some, uh, most of it has been in the private sector, so teaching um, private students or for private companies. Um, but I also done teaching in schools, before and after school programs. And this year, I made my big debut. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. I, I taught in private schools before, but this year I started in a, in a public school full time. Um, so so I was very excited. I felt like I needed, I wanted to contribute to uh, uh, public service. So I went into public schools. I went back to teaching in person. And now we are back in my home in front of my computer. <laughs> yeah, that's so, that's so strange how it works like that, isn't it? Like all of this time teaching in different, in different ways online, then you go back into the classroom and all of a sudden, poof, here we are going back to online. It's almost like this is your moment, like you were created for this moment, right? <laughs> right, right. So, I, I, well, first of all, thank you so much for uh, inviting me to this conversation. And I do mm -hmm. want to acknowledge all those teachers who are out there and all of us uh, transitioning to this online world because even though I've been doing it for a while, yeah, as you mentioned, I just made this transition from teaching in person at a school in face-to-face. -face. Uh, it's always changing and it's always new yeah. and we're always growing with it so yes, yes. everybody take a deep breath <laughs> yes. you got this we're all in this together and helping each other so it's a pleasure yes. to be here and to contribute a little bit of what I can Awesome. Very good. Well, we're, we're su certainly glad that you are here. So want to say a quick hello to those of us that are joining uh, live. I got to say, we have a strong contingent from Ontario, Canada right now because we've got William. There's Katie Short, who has jo joined several of our videos. Um, there's one that didn't come from very far away. There's my daughter, Cassie, who's in the kitchen right now. <laughs> so thought it'd be fun to drop a little comment in here. Brandy Green is here from Oklahoma. There's Monica from Chattanooga, Tennessee, who has jumped into a bunch of these as well. We've got Louise from Texas. Evan is here from Iowa. Good to see Evan. Um, we've also got Connie from Southern California. And there's Melanie, another familiar face. She's from North Carolina. And so... With that all in mind, those are the ones that are joining us. If you are here on the live, then please, please do uh, feel free to uh, throw in any questions that you've got for Paulino, um, as well as if we say anything in the video and you want to add an extra something, um, you know, we really do want to hear from you and, and throw those in. And then Kim is also joining us so um, from Spokane, Washington. So good to see you. So, so Matt, yes. I'm very, very excited to be here. I probably should have mentioned I'm a Spanish teacher, so a lot of my uh, comments come from maybe from that view of language teaching. But I'm very excited to be here because I've been waiting for this opportunity. Oh, Marlene! Marlene, you know, Mar hello, Marlene! <laughs> right I'm next door. To my, uh, uh, people from the area. So, hi, Marlene is there. Um, so I'm excited for this opportunity because I've been waiting for the opportunity to tell everybody the 
best biggest secrets of teaching online. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. I want to hear this too. Let's do this. So here we are. The biggest secret is there is no secret. (laughs) (laughs) But the secret is just um, you, you know, you, you, the teacher and what you bring into your classroom in, in person uh, making the best to bring in yourself into this online world and being that genuine voice and genuine interest that we have for our students. So um, I'm sure we're going to talk about some topic in general, but I, I just want to say, uh, first of all, is that who you are is who you are, and that's who your students are interested in, in this human person. And bringing that human aspect of aspect of yourself to the online world it's the the key trying to find what's the best way to transmit what you could do in the classroom in the yeah. online and with what you have around you so um that's kind of one i want it to be the overarching idea for today we might we might mention some apps we might mention some techniques but your human self is the best yes. gift you can bring to your students. I am so glad that you brought that up because um, we were chatting a little bit before we came on here and Paulino was saying, you, you know, there are so many free things out there. There's so many apps. There's so many different ways to do this. And, you know, he was saying, you know, you don't have to go do all of those things. You don't have to go try all of them. It's like, and then follow up on this if you'd like to. It's just find what works best for you, find what helps you express yourself as a teacher, because the students still love your personality. They just don't get to see you face to face. That's one of the things that kids soak up about us, isn't it, is our own unique personality. And so just finding what expresses that personality and expresses your teaching style best and just roll with it, right? Correct. And, you know, it depends on what medium you're using, then you're going to find ways to bring that in. You know, some people Mm -hmm. like to create music and write their own stories. So maybe that's what you sent to your student, a recording of one of the songs. Or even if you're a bad singer like me, I still send them that song because we do (laughs) sing in the classroom and we just laugh together. Right. Mm -hmm. And some people like to use Bitmoji everywhere they do in, in their classroom, in their presentation. Well, then they're going to be bit modules of what's going on with you all over your assignment. Um, I think that once we we found uh, that connection that we bring to the students through our personality, now we just need to find how we put that in this new medium. Whether we are creating a video or where we where we are creating some. Uh, materials in PDF or paper for people, students to print, those who are not able to join us online, whether we are doing synchronous, um, that's, I think, one of the keys. Yeah, yeah, I think that's so good. Um, So I wanted to ask you, let's kind of go chronologically here a little bit, because for you, um, the online... Once upon a time in 1972. No, No, wait, we decided we weren't going to do that. Okay. So um, I know for... Uh, the years that you you spent teaching online, um, one of the struggles, I believe, is that um, you don't get to see the students face to face. And so an important part of, a, of being a teacher, whether you see them face to face or not, is making sure that you develop those relationships with your students. And so that's one of the things I've been super curious about for, you know, folks like you that have been doing this work for a long time, before you got to see those students, in person physically, how did you maintain those relationships and are there any takeaways that we can borrow from that in our remote learning? Right. Well, uh, you know, if, if for many of us who have been lucky to have our students for most of the year in person and we should take from the little or a lot relationship we have developed there and try to continue that by tapping into into their interest and type of connections that we already created. Mm -hmm. Um, Most teachers, they might do uh, a survey at the beginning of the year to tap and to to learn more about student interest. And we always want to incorporate all those interests Mm -hmm. in the classroom, but we're so fast paced in the classroom trying to go with the curriculum. Well, now we're slowing down and technology allows us 
to, uh, to, to bring uh, that information in many different ways that we can. So if we already know what we, we already know from our students, doing our best to incorporate it even more because mm -hmm. when we are at school, we could have that casual conversation in the hallway. Hey, I saw you at the basketball uh, game last weekend. How did it go? Well, now we don't have that casual conversation. So how can we bring those aspects of the social life of the school into our uh, practice? And if you are in a synchronous situation where you do Zoom or Google Meet with your students, making sure that the time that you are with them in the beginning, the middle, the end, it doesn't matter to include part for that conversation to happen. If you're doing a video or a package, make sure that not all your questions are about just the content, but also that uh, uh, social emotional learning aspect of our education and just plainly saying, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. So the worksheet doesn't have to be all just all the facts about the latest uh, word that you studied, but um, also including a quick here and there. Uh, and, and and I see some, I have seen some example of teachers doing that with a, a cute little uh, block on the on a corner of a worksheet or just starting a video with uh, tell me how you're doing, doing um, daily Google Meets uh, or Zoom in the morning. If you if if your population if your situation allows that to do a, a, a check in, uh, some some teachers have their office hours where students can drop in and just have a normal chat or ask questions how to do the assignment. Um, I also see really uh, great use of Flipgrid for that. We just have mm -hmm. a a quick check in and you continue to have it that conversation. So it's it's always a balance, right? And and I think a lot of teachers are feeling. Uh, the pressure right now is like, they're going to get behind. We can't do as much as we can, you know, um, but it's okay. It's okay if we, the more we continue that, that connection and that conversation, it's the balance that's going to support their, their, their stress, their anxiety to be able to enjoy and interact with the actual content as well as we can do in the, in the school. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I wanted to throw this comment in real quick. This came from Brandy. She said, Pear Deck has good SEL slides. So, I mean, that's sort of what we we're talking about right here is the social emotional aspect of, you know, the just the, the learning process. And if you're not familiar with Pear Deck, you can just do a search for it. It's at PearDeck.com. And it's something that you can add into your slides to make them interactive. And they have really, really good templates that will ask you, that will help you ask those kinds of questions to be able to, you know, uh, get those conversations going and, and connect with your students. So I thought that was a good one to add in. So um, very good. So, um, Paulino, I wanted to change gears just a little bit. Um, so your experience has been in teaching a uh, foreign language, uh, a lot of it um, online. And so we'll, we'll remember that that's sort of the lens that you see the online education through. But I was wondering if you could give us a couple of examples um, because you've tried a lot of stuff and you kind of have seen what has worked well for you and what hasn't worked well and um, have been able to adapt over the years. So I wondered if you could just tell us a couple of examples of some of the things that have really worked well and then we'll put on our teacher hats from whatever role we have and see if we can adapt it over. Right. Well, um, First of all, since we're talking about the online, we have to think about being very comfortable in the environment. So when you go into a classroom, you put the classroom together in the way that is gonna work best and efficient, as efficient as you can for your subject, whether it's visual um, materials, whether it's the props and the elements that you need. So being very comfortable in your environment it's, I think, uh, uh, a key for the, so that you can be relaxed and centered and present and not thinking yeah. about what button, do you, what button do I need to press? Are we, you know, are, do I have to mute everybody? So yeah. I think that starting with the right mindset to be able to be there present for your students. 
when I've been doing synchronous situations and being in uh, a Zoom meeting or Hangout at the time, I don't use Hangouts anymore, but I've done uh, Skype, Hangouts, Meet, Zoom, um, uh, lots of them, is uh, finding the way so that the warmth that we are able to uh, get in in face to face, we we find a way together to try to recreate that, and that could mean that we are all going to take a minute to make sure that we are uh, listening to each other, that we can see clearly, establish establishing the routines and and procedures of the class, um, but also taking a moment just to to have that that presence. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of language learning, I also want to make sure that um, I'm a good model and that in terms of technically that they can hear and see me well, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, it, it, it might be silly kind of to mention, but it's like you are in a good environment, just like you are in the classroom and you want everybody to hear you. To, to make sure that that technical part is there, but also that I can uh, plan my lesson according to what my students are reacting in the moment. So I, uh, the same thing that in the classroom, if something is not working, I'm gonna switch gears. Well, just be ready and adaptable to do that as well. Um, the one thing that has worked very well to me is uh, do as little as kind of slide presentation as possible and as much of interaction as possible, uh, as long as you uh, create the environment for it and, and the, 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 structure, the structure for it. Because you are, if you are doing synchronous learning, uh, that's the moment that they can see you and hear you. They can look at the slides and 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 a video content. So you can record uh, the slides before, and they can they can watch it. But why not use that time for them to have this opportunity to have this human to human interaction? I know we are through this class, but they don't have that anymore. So um, making sure that that is there, and then uh, you know that is there in any way possible according to your, your subject. So, uh, the, so the first thing I do, I get into the classroom, I make sure that we are, are, are accounted for and uh, start having uh, those conversations. And if possible, if your class allows to have a little moment with each of them. When you're in the classroom, you can quickly do a look to someone in the corner. In the online world, they're all looking at you and you are looking at pictures, but you don't have that quick wink moment that people feel acknowledged. Yeah. So um, finding that way to give that quick wink to people who need it, and it will, it might take some practice, depends on what you're doing. It might be a quick, uh, message in the comments like, hey, Nick, you seem sleepy. Are you OK? Um, mm -hmm. Or um, or having a direct interaction. So um, so it's a little of that balance of the technical aspect and also bringing that human aspect as well. Yeah, definitely. Oh, my goodness. There were so many good takeaways from that. That was great. Um, you know, I really liked the, the fact that you mentioned um, that the live video, one of the, the keys to the live video is the fact that you can see each other face to face. And so it's it's sometimes our tendency, um, I think, to think, OK, we have these slides and we're going to present these slides. And then all of a sudden you put a slide up on the screen and then they don't get to see you anymore. It's like that that kind of eliminates that that thing that live video is really good at. If that's what it's really good at, then for goodness sake, let's use it for that. And just like you said, if you have slides to show them and you've got to put them on the screen, okay, that's fine, but don't just leave them up there. Give them a copy of the slides so they can go look at them later and let them see your face and let them interact with you and hear your voice and all of that. I thought that was fantastic. So, um, okay, and as far as uh, those of you that are watching live, if you have anything that has worked for you as far as instruction, I just asked Paulino, I'm asking you also, um, if there's anything that has worked for you as far as tips for interacting with students, building relationships, activities that have worked, if you have any of those tips, please throw them in there and I'll drop them into the, um, I'll drop them in on the screen as well. So. Um, 
something else I want to ask you, Paulino, is um, I know when you when you were working with um, no, you know what? I want to go a different direction with this. I was going to ask you about slow internet, no internet. Maybe we can get to that because that's a whole issue in and of itself. But one I, thing, I give you a quick, quick, a quick oh, word for that. Yes, advocate. Advocate, advocate for those students who are in need the most. I think. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna get a little on the on the what is it called the box the soapbox. Soapbox. Yes. But uh, you know, uh, one of the things that worries me the most right now, transitioning fr from face to face in the public schools to online, is the equity uh, and. Um, we're trying to scramble to help those who do not have the device, the internet access. Uh, yesterday, I spent an hour talking on the phone with a family who only speaks Spanish and they got their device, we got internet, we gone to a Google Meet and I, I was almost to tears to be able to see uh, finally the face of one of my students yeah. and, and also help them to get in touch with, um, get, finally to get to those materials. And I think that, um, uh, you know, some uh, districts are more fortunate than others, um, but um, if we all work together and, and find find resources, and I think that advocacy piece and see what can we do so that they don't, um, not just uh, get behind because they don't get the content, but the, the disconnect that they are getting right now, right? So it's not just the anxiety of the confinement, but also they don't get to hear, see, or get anything from, from, from their teachers, some of them. Um, so that's gonna drop that word there, advocacy. Advocacy, yes, I love that. I think that's, that's super, super important. So you know what, you just covered that topic perfectly and now we can leave that one and we can go to this other thing I wanted to talk about. So that was that was a pro move, Paulino. I'm impressed. Um, okay, so the thing I wanted to ask you about was one that you alluded to just a little bit there, and that was the fact that this year you're doing some face-to-face -face teaching for the first time in a while. And so this year you take on this class, you take on these students um, at a school right near your home, and then all of a sudden here we are in March – and they're going, okay, we're switching to online learning. And you're going, this is what I've been doing <laughs> for the longest time. I go back to face-to-face, -to -face, and now here I am back in online. And so um, I think this positions you perfectly to answer this question. Um, I would love to hear from your experience online and then switching back into the classroom and then having to go to remote learning. So you had all of that experience that we didn't have. So I'd love to hear from you, like when you found out that that's the switch you were going to make, what were some of the priorities that you had and what were some of the things you knew you wanted to get in place first as you switch these traditional face-to-face -face students into online learning? Well, first of all, I did go back to face-to-face -to -face because I made it that interaction in the classroom. I love technology and I love online, but I think that what you can contribute in your daily interaction is important. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of funny that I went back. And, um, you know, going back to online, in my personal situation, I felt like, you know, I, I do have all the tools that I need. I have and all the skills that I need. I have been developing that for a long time by teaching online. Um, what I wanted to make sure is that I was, well, first of all, all the administration aspect of it. <laughs> you know, we, oh, we yeah. you know, <laughs> being in a public school is that level of administration. So just making sure that you have all you need. <laughs> Mm -hmm. to fulfill your administrative aspect of teaching. The, the fun part, right, Matt? Oh, yeah, <laughs> oh. that's why we got into teaching, right? <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, um, but also, I wanted to make sure that in terms of materials and curriculum, that um, I wanted to cover my base to, to make sure that uh, I was going to have all the materials that I would need to continue the interaction. In my case, I'm very fortunate that I, um, I, I build my own curriculum. And, and if you are not, I encourage you to, to look at how you can bring yourself as part of the curriculum. If you have to fill a, a complete a curriculum in a book, it's like, how can you 
be part of the curriculum if you cannot change it. But in my case, I built my own and um, just uh, continuing that transition of building a little bit of consistency on what they were experiencing in the class to what they're doing online so that a little bit of that anxiety uh, was lower. So one example is one of the great comments that I got from uh, first graders who are just trying to understand what's going on. A parent say, oh, my student loved the, the videos uh, because they were the same activities that we did in the classroom. And I used a lot of movement. That was my, my fear. I used a lot of movement with my first graders and second graders. So I, bis I find a way to put my camera. I'm six foot six, Matt. So getting my full body into yeah. the screen is yeah. hard so i put i find a way i clear the space to put my whole body in the camera so they can have the experience they have in the classroom of the doing the full movement with me and finding the continuity finding the commonalities finding what's known mm -hmm. and not necessarily oh we are online we're going to do flipgrid we're going to do peer nearpod we're going to you know not just jumping into these um uh, i know all these tool, uh, tools that we're going to use and it's going to be fun but just how can i bring you some of what is known mm -hmm. that's one piece that was very important to me especially for the younger ones. Mm -hmm. And for the a little older ones was, I know that this is difficult for you as well. Mm -hmm. So besides that social emotional aspect, I want to uh, make sure that whenever I bring something to you, I support it not only content-wise, scaffolding-wise, but also technology-wise. So that's mm -hmm. why in every single lesson that I do, at the end it says, by the way, you're going to be doing this activity on Google Slides, and some of you know it, but uh, there is a short tutorial on how to do it. Just the same as in the classroom, I don't just say, here's the paper, go and do it, right? right. So yeah. I, I, I give clear instructions. So I think that some, um, some teachers are forgetting that part. It's like, oh, I'm online now. I'm going to send you a worksheet or send you a video, mm -hmm. and good luck. But mm -hmm. Uh, taking time either to find someone who has done a tutorial on how to use Flipgrid, not mm -hmm. just because Flipgrid is very popular, it means that every student will be able to use it as well, but to give them that 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 extra support. So I'm not only there you with the content, I'm not only here or trying to be as humanly possible here with the social and emotional aspect, but also to support you in this new environment. So yeah. um, what I brought with me was that thinking of where they are, what do they know, so that I can support them there as well. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's that's great. Um, wow, there's there's been a lot of really good stuff up here. I've been like furiously typing in the banners at the bottom to make sure that we capture everything. So if you're here watching this live and you can drop it into the chat. I'd love to hear, like, what was your one big takeaway from this? What was the thing Paulino says that you think that you you would want to um, take with you? And so I know, um, gosh, for me, I think that probably the big thing is just remembering what your personality is. What is your strength as a teacher? And then finding ways to reflect that in your online instruction, in your remote instruction, because that's also going to provide the consistency. That was another thing you said that I thought was super important was how can it still feel like class in school whenever it's online? If you can find those ways to make the consistency, like for you trying to find ways to put your whole body on video and do all of the physical things that you do with language learning. So Yes, uh, Matt, but you and I know that teachers want to know, but how can I use this on Monday? What can I do for Monday? So I'm going to give you what you can do for Monday morning, you know, or, okay. or Sunday night. So you're preparing for your Monday lesson. So mm -hmm. we, we did mention that use the tools that you know, and now uh, people who have been doing this online thing for mm -hmm. a couple of weeks or more now are using different or learning about new different tools or using this all this free stuff that we're getting from all these wonderful companies. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right. But also go back to what you know and then go deeper. You've used Google Slides. Well, I'm sure you can find 
dozens of posts from Matt of 10 different ways to use <laughs> Google Slides. Got a bunch get, of them. get your students to say, please not more Google Slides. And then you find another way to use Google Slides to them. Mm -hmm. Embed a video, embed audio. Now we have audio on Google Slides. Make them interactive, make a choice board, make a website, make it a flip grid, make it an animation. Go mm -hmm. deeper into this one thing that you already know. Mm -hmm. You're using Zoom, you say? Go deeper into Zoom. Find out yes. how to do breakout rooms. Find out how to do polls. How down how to do um, highlighting someone's video so that they can present. Mm -hmm. Understand better how how to mute, how to change the chat. Just find you take one tool that you're using and just go deeper into it, and you'll find that you can unlock. Uh, a lot of possibilities. So that's the homework for everyone for Sunday night. Yes, go back to what you know and then go deeper. Oh, that's brilliant. I absolutely love it. So, um, all right, very good. Paulino, if uh, people want to get in touch with you, if they wanted to ask you more questions or whatever, is there a place where we can send them? Well, I say let's go Twitter. Woohoo! I, th I see Twitter yeah. is a great way. So Paulino at Paulino Brenner, as you can see here, there we are. Um, uh, that could be a great way. I have started my online professional development on Twitter, and that's how I would like to continue. Of course, there are other ways, but that's that's a great way to contact me. Excellent. Very good. All right, this has been so fantastic, Paulino. Thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you for the invitation and good luck to all of you. You got this. Take a deep breath. And as one dear friend to my dear friend of mine said to me, you are enough. You are enough. I love that. That's great. So if you've been watching this live, thank you again so much for joining us. We've had a blast having you along and throwing in your ideas. If you're watching this on the replay, thank you so much for finding us. If you like these live videos and would love more, of course, hit that subscribe button on YouTube and then hit the little bell next to it so that you get notifications whenever we do more of these. So uh, for Paulino Brenner, I'm Matt Miller. We've enjoyed being with you on this video and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.